Welcome to the Intuitive Websites Internet Marketing Podcast, bringing you the country's top podcast on the subject of internet marketing. I'm your host, Glenn Thayer, and today we'll discuss pay-per-click advertising on search engines. I'm here with the CEO of Intuitive Websites, Thomas Young, and search engine specialist, Dennis McCarthy. Hi, guys. Hey, Glenn. Hi, Glenn. Well, this can be a very effective method for driving traffic to your website. With pay-per-click, can you give us a little bit of a background on how it all came about? Well, actually, this is a fairly new form of advertising, and it's, it's just literally exploded. Um, my first experience with, with this was in the late 90s, where there was really one search engine doing it. It was Overture.com, which has since been acquired by Yahoo. But Overture introduced this process whereby if you weren't being found in the search engines just naturally or organically, you could pay to be listed and to be ranked above um, all the other listings there. And the way the process worked is it was like an open auction. So the person that bid the highest would be ranked the highest. And, and the way it worked is that, that clients would come in, set up an account with Overture.com, and then that account then would be drained as clicks happened or as people visited your website. So it's a very unique way of approaching um, advertising on the web because everyone wants to be listed in the search engine. Everyone wants to be, you know, number one or number two on the first page. With this pay for position, um, it, it, it basically gave uh, search engine marketers and other advertisers a way to, to guarantee placement. Now, the, really, a lot of people still don't really even know what this is. Only about 45% of people even know that this exists. So a lot of users on the web have no idea what it's about. And it goes by several different names. Um, each of the different search engines that offer the program call it something else or something different. But basically what it, what we want to call it uh, today is pay-per-click, which is the concept of you're, you're, you're getting charged when people click on your, on your website. And, um, so that would, that would be your pay for position to come up higher up on the search engine rank. That would be uh, pay-per-click, like you were saying. You also have paid positioning, paid, paid advertising. Paid listings, paid advertising. It goes by different names. It's, but all it's, the, it's all the same thing, though, right? It's all the same okay. thing. And it's really the process of, like I said, getting, getting listed higher than organic searches. Now, uh, to give a little bit more background about this, Currently, there are two major players in, in this industry, and that's Google with their AdWords program, and it's Yahoo with their Overture.com program. And there's, there's the idea that, well, well who's going to click on these? Well, the data is pretty conclusive. The people that use Google, about, it's, there's an 80-20 rule. About 20% of people will click on, on these, these paid listings or these ads. In MSN and Yahoo, it's closer to 50-50. And it's also uh, the case that some people really don't know that they click on these ads. And, and if you launch a campaign and look at the traffic, you'll see it's a very popular way to drive uh, visitors into your site. Now, this isn't to be confused with banner advertising, correct? No, it's very different. This is specifically on search engines, and it's made up from, uh, of Internet web searches. Banner advertising was the precursor to all of this. And uh, people developed what we call banner blindness over time where uh, they actually ignore banners the moment they don't even look at them. Getting back to the search engines, can you give us an example of exactly how this works? Absolutely. If, if you go to Google and do a search, any search, let's, let's take an example of Leather Wallet. Uh, we work with uh, a company called Bosca and, and they sell leather wallets. And so this is a good example to show, show people how, how the paid listings work. When you do the search, you'll see three or four different sections on the page. On the top of the page, there are some links that are in blue. Those are premier sponsored links. That's, that's the, an example of what we're talking about. They're paid listings. Those folks have, have paid for that position, and their accounts are charged when someone clicks. Then off to the right of the page, you will see more sponsored links. These are folks that just are not paying that premium dollar to be at the top, but they're still the same thing, paid advertisements. And then in the middle of the page, toward, toward the left and on down to the bottom, are the organic searches. And these are the searches that are there because um, Google feels like it's the best optimized page given the term that was searched on. And uh, different PPC or pay-per-click companies handle um, those placements differently. On some, they won't be on the right and then on the top, they'll be entirely on the top or even interspersed within, within the page itself. So it's more difficult to tell on the non-Google PPC um, sites, wh which is paid listing and which is not. But bottom line is you're buying search terms, 
and your customers will search for those terms, see your ad, and hopefully click through to your website. Okay. Well, you see a lot of, of things going on when you when I click on like Earthlink or go to MSN or AOL. A lot of times you'll see here's the Google Ads, if you will, on the side. How does that work? As far as Google Ads that that show up on a variety of websites, exactly. Well, what happens is the two major players in this in this field, Google and Yahoo, and, and Yahoo's company is called Overture. They have relationships, and they have relationships with many different websites. Uh, Google has relationships, for example, with AOL or with Earthlink or Ash Jeeves or AT and T WorldNet, and Yahoo has a relationship with MSN. Uh, the Microsoft network and, and, and a variety of others. So when you have a, an ad set up in one of these accounts, that ad is getting a lot of exposure. They also have what's called content networks. And, and basically this is uh, folks that, that sign up to carry advertisements for Google or Overture. And so you can literally see your ads spread out on hundreds or if not, if not thousands of websites. So for example, if... Um you sell barbecue sauce, and CNN does a story on, that includes barbecue information, your little ad will appear um, over on the right of the barbecue sauce CNN article. Do you guys have anything else to add on the, the background of pay-per-click advertising? Well, it, you know, one thing, it is, it's a complex area. And as we get into this in this podcast, um, hopefully we'll, we'll kind of take apart some of those complexities and make it more easier to understand. But... Um, it really is the process of getting in there, understanding it, and learning it, and uh, and then it'll start to be more clear. Well, you had mentioned something as, as far as accounts being set up and people clicking, and every time that their ad gets clicked, that they get charged or it gets pulled from their account. Isn't there some click fraud that goes on with that, with people going in and let's say a competitor sees a competitor's ad. They go in and go, oh, well, I can just keep clicking that and hopefully I can delete their funds or their pay-per-click fund. Well, it's, it's true. And there's, there's several issues that are controversial around this whole uh, methodology, this whole business model. One of the controversies happens to be that it really benefits Google and Overture if people click on these ads, but they control all the reporting of who clicks and who doesn't. So that right there is, is it's, it's, there's a lot of gray area in how that, that, that is run as a business model. The other ethical component is, um, well, are people that click on these ads actually going to buy? Are we going to see some return from these folks? Or we just have a lot of people clicking on ads and, and just looking through pages? And the other area is, well, are serious buyers going to use paid ads or are they going to stick with organic searches? So this makes... This makes it kind of interesting how all of this works. And, um, and, and of course, click fraud is, is, is huge right now. Now, this could change next week, but as of today, there really isn't an answer to that click fraud question. Google just settled a lawsuit for $90 million that was, that was brought upon them because of, of click fraud accusations, and more are coming. And Google settled this lawsuit because they don't want people to know the inside secrets of how they run this program. So once again, there, there's there's kind of some ethical issues around just the business model. Um, but Google does have, um, they see click fraud as a major potential problem. They've got a lot of really smart people working on it, and they do have a number of methods in place for finding out if somebody's cheating. And I think that's going to improve because, it's like, like Dennis said, it's just too much money that they're making. If you look at the, the Google share price right now hovering close to $400 a share, that is happening because of these, these pay-per-click programs. And in fact, the Yahoo share price just took a, a big hit recently because they announced that they were going to delay the release of their new, uh, their new interface for their pay-per-click program. Um, their interface is not kept up with the Google interface. It's, it's, it's more difficult to use. And because of that, their, their shares took a hit. So the, the bottom line is, yes, there's some controversy. You have to learn about how all this works. But you know, any ad spending carries some risk. The nice thing about these programs is you definitely can track uh, all of the activity that, that happens on, on in the program itself. Well, even with all the, the, the click fraud and all the things that can go wrong with doing pay-per-click advertising, honestly, do these programs really work? Well, they work. They definitely work if done properly. And, and once again, you know, we've talked about this in all the podcasts. It's, it's a strategic thing. If you want this to work, you have to give it some thought and do it right. You don't go in and just, because you sell leather wallets, go after the term leather wallets. <laughs> you have to think through the process. 
Um, so how, given the example of leather wallets, how else would you market that? Well, you've got to look at niches. And you've got to look on the return based on what you're going to pay for those click-throughs. There's a lot. There's a lot that has to do with running an effective program. But the key thing here is that um, the search engines want this to work. Consumers are looking to buy these products, and they're doing these searches. And really, only five percent of companies right now are doing pay-per-click, which is which is phenomenal when you think about it. So there's a lot of growth coming in this industry, and a lot of the things we're talking about now will get ironed out over time. If you're a new company and you're in a competitive place where a lot of people are searching on your keywords, you can't afford not to use this type of advertising or you will be invisible on the web. So all your efforts at creating your website and all the money you spent on design and so forth will be wasted because you'll have no visitors. Well, Dennis, what are a few of the secrets to running an effective pay-per-click advertising program? You have to kind of look at it as an end-to-end -end approach where... Um, First, you have to understand the keywords that, you, that you'll be going after, and you have to understand your customers. Um, there has to be a process where someone searches for your keyword. They see an ad with what they were searching for in the title of the ad. They will be more inclined to click that ad because they're thinking, hey, this is what I was looking for. And when they do click through, there has to be a place, a page, a landing page, we call it, that also includes that search term. Uh, if, for example, I'm looking for a, a portable DVD player for a long ride I'm taking to Chicago with four children in the back of the car. If I um, go on Google... You wouldn't be I, doing that at all, would you? No. <laughs> if I go on Google and I search for portable DVD player, I see an ad that says portable DVD players at great prices, quality units. I click on that ad, I get to a landing page that talks all about portable DVD players. If instead I got to a page that was, say, a company that sells DVD players and telephones and, and iPods and all of that, I would be very inclined to just click out of there and go back to the, the uh, advertiser who has exactly what I'm looking for. So the end-to-end -end approach is really, really critical. From the beginning of the search on through the landing on your landing page, and also very importantly, and we'll get into this in future podcasts, uh, give uh, the visitors to these landing pages some way to convert, some way to take a desired action like a lead generation or a purchase. Okay. Well, you you had mentioned something earlier as far as the wallets and the search terms, because uh, I want to make sure our listeners are really clear exactly how that works. You said like uh, Bosca, the leather wallets. There's some other terms that you could put out instead of just leather wallet, because leather wallet may come at a premium. What what other words would you use? What what would be a good example for that? What other search terms could you use? Well, there, there's a lot of different types of wallets. For example, it could be an Italian leather wallet. Or it could be an eight pocket coat wallet, or it could be a you know alligator skin wallet, or whatever. You want to go after those niches. That one of the key things with running an effective program is to go after your brand first. So if you have any kind of an established brand, no matter what size it is, go after that brand first. So for example, for Bosca, the brand would be the, the name of their company, Bosca. Any search that's done with that name in it, they should be capturing. The second thing then is to look after key product searches. Dennis mentioned the portable DVD players. Well, when people go searching for DVD players and they, they happen to have a, a model name or, a, or a, 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 you know some kind of number or, or name of a product, you want to make sure that you're listed uh, under those terms with a paid advertising campaign. And the third area is local searches. Uh, local searches are often overlooked by internet marketing folks, and and you can set up campaigns in Google so that if someone's looking for an attorney in Colorado Springs, for example, they'll see a listing, they'll see your listing, and it won't show up if you know they're searching from Indianapolis, only from searches done in Colorado Springs. And one really important factor is to do your homework before you ever launch the campaign. You have to know the, the roughly the estimates on what the search traffic will be on the terms you're looking at buying. People will all enthusiastically get in there and buy the term uh, tritone Italian leather wallet, and it will turn out that no one is looking for that. So you need to know what people are looking for before you launch your campaign. Now, Absolutely. How and I want to add on to that because, and Dennis and I run into this all the time, is where uh, companies have their own internal speak, the own, you know, how they describe their products and services. But the rest of the world may not exactly describe it that way. So you have to do searches based on how your customers describe your product or brand or whatever you're selling, as opposed to how it's discussed internally. And ultimately, you'll create 
a keyword catch of 200 words thinking that everyone is searching for these things and there will be eight that really get search volume. It ha it's happened in every campaign we've ever worked with. Okay. Now, what about budgets? What somebody what should somebody plan on budgeting and how exactly do, does a budget work into the pay for click? Well, th there's a lot of nice things about how budgeting can be done. For one is is you can start with a very small budget and test. Like $20? Well, you could. You could start with $20. And, and, and budgets are also dependent on a couple other factors. One is, is the, the price tag associated with the terms you're going after. For example, if you go after the term leather wallet, you're going to pay more than if you go after the term Italian leather wallet because there are more searches under leather wallet. So, it, it, so budgeting is also dependent on ROI because if you go after leather wallet and you pay those premiums, well, what kind of sales are you getting? You might get enough sales to cover that the expense of that term. Um, budgeting is also, you know, you have to think about how, you're, how you test with, with your budgets. And we recommend that clients run programs, do some testing, stop the programs, look at the ROI, look at their spend, and then come back and, and reevaluate and make changes. But we also have clients that go after crumb terms or just, just miscellaneous terms that, that don't get a lot of traffic, but when they do, they're just right on niches that can be very beneficial. What would be an example of a crumb term? Oh, let's say that you sell a, well, I, I think you know, if we were talking about wallets, I think if you sell an, an alligator leather wallet or an ostrich skin leather wallet, you know, you're not going to get a lot of searches for that. But when you do, you want to be first on the, on, the, on the listings. Okay. Now, you can also do some testing. You know, if you want to go after leather wallet and you want to say, hey, what would happen if we were number one under leather wallet? We'll do it for a day or two, drive the traffic, drive the numbers, and then look for the conversions and go from there. And a couple other things I want to mention. One is is uh, on content match. When you set up your campaigns, you'll see two different kinds of matches. One is the regular searches, and one is content match. Content match is can be very tricky, and we tend to have people avoid that uh, unless you feel like there's a, a real good reason for that. What content match is 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 having your ad show up on on hundreds of other miscellaneous websites that may not be search engine sites, sites like CNN and and, and sites like that. Content matches can get a lot of traffic and go through your spend pretty quickly, but they don't always, don't always end in, in conversions because the kind of visitors that come in can vary wi wildly. And the default setting in Google when you set up a new ad campaign is, yes, do include content matching. So you literally have to turn it off if you don't want to use it in Google. So you would say to start the campaign, make sure content match is turned off to start a new campaign? I think for the most part it's a good idea, unless you see that um, you, know, you have a niche term that you want anyone that looks under that niche term to click on you, I would say turn content match off. Okay. How do you know if the budget is set too low? Well, we've run campaigns where we did not have a big enough budget. And what, ha what happens in a very competitive keyword field is that you will end up with very, very low visibility and very, very low placement. In other words, you'll be the 50th ad showing and no one ever goes to that fifth page of, of sponsored results. So um, you'll know if the budget's too low if you're just getting no traffic. The number of impressions is based on how much you're spending and the quality of your ads related to your landing pages. So you'll know the budget's too low if you get too few impressions. So how would you suggest our listeners track their return on investment? Many people, and this is one of the biggest mistakes that we see people making with uh, PPC campaigns when we take them over. Many people are content to have no conversion data. Google has a way that you can put a little snippet of code on either the thank you for your order page of your website or on the thank you for your um, submitting your information to become a sales lead page of your website. You put a little snippet of code on those pages and it reports back to Google for 30 full days that this person came from your paid listing. Many people uh, make the mistake of being content with no conversions. And our advice to all of our clients is if you're not getting ROI, if you're not getting conversions, you really need to take a hard look at that campaign. And, and conversions are also tied into to getting visibility. Um, if you are showing up on searches and having people look at, at your website, that, that should be a good thing. And um, so conversions could be tracked if you're trying to, to get you know, information on direct sales or lead generation. But visibility under brand searches or product searches can also be a really good thing. And also keep in mind that if someone calls and places an order or inquires, that's a conversion too.
And many people will put a special 800 number on the top of their website so they'll know that that order is coming from the web. Perfect. Well, it's that time for the action plan. For those of you who have been listening, know that we end each podcast with an action item. So what key action items do we have for our listeners today, folks? Well, the key thing about these podcasts that we're doing is we're trying to to start at a baseline and educate you up. And and the, the thing you have to do is take some responsibility. Go to Google.com, go to Overture.com, and take their tutor- tutorials and learn as much as you can about paid listings and pay-per-click and all of that. And then also keep your eye on MSN because they're going to get into this marketplace. They're they're starting slow, but we have a feeling they're going to be finishing pretty strong and be a major competitor. I would suggest that you experiment and start a small campaign. Pick just a handful of key terms, set a, set a small manageable budget, and learn how to, how to operate a, a paper, a pay-per-click campaign on Google or Overture. What would be a good realistic budget? Well, it really depends. I think it depends on the size of your business. I mean, a small business, it might be a couple hundred dollars a month. A larger business, it might be $2,000 a month. But it shouldn't be a, a number that's so large that there's a lot of debate around whether or not we should do this. Um, there are many, many really cool tools that you'll find on Overture and also on Google. If you click around a little bit on Overture, you'll see a, a, a search term suggestion tool that you can play around with. And it's fa- in fact, it's under the Resource Center and under Keyword Selector Tool. You'll see it there on the, on the right side of the page on uh, Overture.com. Also, there's, there's a great website out there called wordtracker.com, and this, this is a, a website that can help you doing keyword analysis, finding out how competitive keywords are, and, and it'll help you get a sense of how expensive it will be to target those keywords. Keep in mind that you want to focus on your brand and your key services or products, and you want to look for market niches, especially local markets as well. Uh, and, and that's about it. So I'm thinking that that if you if you really want to get maximum impact, start with the tutorials on Overture.com and on Google, and then you know we can be here for you as a resource as well if if you need help. Anything and else, Dennis? A great way to um, get a quick sense of what's going on is just if you sell leather wallets, go search for leather wallets, and you'll know exactly who your competitors are. And another tool they have on the Yahoo resources page is. Um, something that lets you see exactly how much your competitors are paying for those terms. It's called the View Bids Tool on the Resource Center section of the Overture page. Well, wonderful. Well, folks, you have your homework. Just a reminder, this has been the Intuitive Websites Internet Marketing Podcast. And for more information and to see all the podcasts and much more, visit intuitivewebsites.com.